So, the introductions and what introductions are over. Right, Joe gentlemen. Cortez calls them to centre ring. We went over the rules in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my command at all times. Give me good sportsmanlike conduct. Understood? All right, shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Where's Lorenzo? Right here. Right here. They've already shared 72 minutes of ring action, these two. Neither of them have ever been stopped. The next round you see between them, this one coming up, will be the 25th that they have contested. In November 92, it was Bo. In November 93, it was Holyfield. Will it be another November to remember? And what result in 95? Holyfield, as always, stoical, stone-faced. Bo, who looks like he's just turning up to do some supermarket shopping sometimes when he gets in the ring, but it's different when they start. It's Bo Holyfield 3. Can Holyfield turn back the clock, having looked like he might be a fading force over the last couple of years, notwithstanding his comeback win over Ray Mercer, which was hard work for him. And why do we have a delay now, I wonder? Well, they're just making sure that the ropes are at the right tension. One of the belts holding them in place has been taken away and are all set to go here on this chilly night at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Holyfield, they tight gloves with his back to you and in the cold trunks. The strategy will be interesting. Will Holyfield try the same gung-ho approach that he did in the first fight, even against a man weighing two stones more and it proved costly for him? Or will he try that clever ploy that he did in the second fight, never allowing Bo to really get set? What do you think, Glenn? Yes, you feel that he, he must really adopt the, the second option. He must try and make himself a moving target. He must be in and out, very elusive. It was interesting to hear him predict Holy Field, though, that he would not bow out here. And he's not a man given to easy, cheap, glib remarks like that. If he says something like that, that is what he thinks. Look sharp, Holy Field, at the start here. really been a, a big puncher in the heavyweights. Good lateral movement so far from Holyfield. Just changing the angle. Making sure he's not there for Bo to start letting those heavy right hands go. Bo has been told by Eddie Futch to use the jab and then he says that everything will flow off that. They know each other so well, of course, now. Just getting off the, the quicker, as we thought he would. Holyfield, who's trained long and hard for this. I must say, against Michael Moura, when he lost the title, he looked so flat that he did look like a shot fighter. But he's come back from that with the win over Mercer. Bo unleashes for the first time. Holyfield coming back with a left hook and uppercut. Holyfield has certainly been the busier in this first round. You feel that Bo will want to draw Holyfield in. Bo is a, is a very good fighter inside, has a wonderful uppercut. And he'll be wanting to, to control with the jab and then bring it in so he can use his strength and power in close. Bo was talking to Holyfield as they worked in close there, I noticed. Holyfield's working well with the jab so far. Heads seem to come close together there. Bit of a grimace from Holyfield. Last 10 seconds of the round. Good right hand from Holyfield over the top. He looks much more like the old Evander Holyfield early on here, but this, of course, is very much the preliminary skirmishing. Holyfield's round. Can they? Welcome back. They are already working away at the left eye of Riddick Bow with the M12. Holyfield unmarked. There's just seemed to be a clash of heads that may have caused that 
Krause, a good man for Holyfield, the fight, the fight plan was perfect there. That's how he needs to fight this fight, in and out, and just being first with the jab. Here we go with round two. Holyfield, of course, on the right of your picture. Much the smaller man. What a warrior he's been. Finding though with that jab very, very well indeed. So focused for this fight. Had a long chat with him in his uh, hotel suite the other day. And he's definitely up for it and sees this as a chance to really re-establish himself. Yes, he seems pretty confident and really nobody knows but quite like Holfield does. So you think that you know, he suspects he can do something in this fight. Tentative start from Bo, who, despite being 17 stone two, his lightest for three years, still looks a little bit fleshy around the waist, but that's the way with him. Holyfield, so much the athlete, probably and arguably the best conditioned heavyweight of all time. We're just starting to use the jab a little bit. It looks as if he's trying to load up for that right hand. It looks sharp, but Holyfield has just managed to avoid it so far. Who's not using his jab at all, is he? He's starting to use it a little more than he was. Very quiet in the first round, but he's just starting to pick it out more and more. Holyfield looking for the faster right hand counter, and Bo managing to avoid it. Might have been interesting how that landed. No doubt that Bo is the man with more power. Holyfield's job is to make sure he doesn't unleash it too often. Good fighting inside there from Bo. Some of those landing on the gloves with the left hook didn't. To the side of the head of Holyfield. Probably Bo's most dark catching punch so far. Yes, they're both working well inside. Bo also has a very good uppercut that he throws. Yes, it was a devastating one of those that started the trouble for Holyfield in the 10th round. That memorable 10th round of the first fight. Good right hand from Holyfield. Holyfield coming in closer and closer. Again, decent body punches from Bo inside. But both of them scoring in these exchanges and Holyfield so busy big right hand the bell goes to end the round and Holyfield wants to fight on well all the pre-fight friendship was over there Holyfield really got steamed up welcome back this is this interlude right at the end of the last round the bell had gone here that's right and Holyfield just seemed to get through that left hook and then it started. There was some talk before the fight, Holyfield. They touch gloves again now. Holyfield complaining that Bo often used foul tactics. And he was worried about him always wanting to get the last punch in at the end of rounds, even if the bell had already gone. And I wonder if that was what he felt had happened there. I think he did. And he decided to give Bo some back. Now that might heat things up a bit. Third round. In the Holyfield corner there, Tommy Brooks was really bellowing at him. I think they were very unhappy that he, he stopped his tactics and decided to have a fight with Bo. Bo got it with a good right cross there, but Holyfield came back with one of his own. This shows signs that it could boil up into another very, very good fight between these two. Very good of a cut there from Bo. That's his good punch inside. Holyfield guarding against that with his gloves just below his chin as they worked inside and again Pope makes it work for him though just beginning to cuff Holyfield around a bit inside making his strength tell and again the jolting right uppercut Holyfield finds one of his own though the crowd responds to that too 
Oh, and look at this. Body and head punches from Holyfield. Back comes Bo again. Now they're letting the punches fly. Rising excitement here about what is evolving, possibly. This, this one's starting to look more and more like their first encounter. Holyfield has been caught by several right uppercuts, a couple of body shots as well. And Keegan punches up, says the referee, to Bo. There's certainly some rough stuff going on inside there, all right. It's quite hard to see how often Bo is actually landing with that uppercut. Because Holyfield's gloves do protect his chin. Some of them are hitting the gloves, some of them are getting through. Yes, some of them are getting through. He's working well inside, but for a big man with long arms, he does get them short punches going. Tough round to score with the working in so close like this and a lot catching the arms and gloves, but the impression is that Bo has been a lot busier. But there goes Holyfield with that trademark right hand of his. In over the top. Last quarter of a minute of round three. And this has been a grueling round of infighting. It's a grueling round which Bo is just getting the better of. Probably Riddick Bowe's row that I would think for his work, mainly with the uppercuts as they worked inside. Yes, he was content just to let Holyfield push forward and lean on him, just so he could try and get the leverage for his little cluster of punches inside. And they worked well, he just seemed to get through with the cleaner shot, especially the, the right uppercut, which is a good punch. You see it worked perfectly there. Holyfield just using that same punch that he could affect himself. Such tough work, but though, after a pretty slow start, a lot busier now. Yes, he's picked it up. He was very calm at the beginning of the fight, and I think you know, he hadn't gotten himself really psyched up. But he certainly, this is a lot better now. There's Glenn McCrory's scorecard so far. And he has Bo up by one round at this stage. Round four. Oh, a great right hand from Bo there on the counter. Sharp and fast at Holyfield's left hook was an eye catcher too. And the right to the body, a good shot. Holyfield slips it up. Bo in a spot of trouble for a moment. Holyfield certainly got the better of that exchange and it looked as if Bull was just looking to grab for a second. You see, this is a totally different Evander Holyfield from the man we saw look so awful, really, against Michael Mora on the night he lost the title. He looked there like a finished fighter, but this is much more like the old Holyfield. He said that night, to be fair to him, that he was carrying a bad shoulder injury. Great start to the round by Holyfield who probably realised he lost that last round on the scorecards and came straight out to re-establish himself. He's just looking to try and tie Bo up inside. He doesn't want him to use them free hands inside there. Question has to be asked though about Holyfield after so many hard and grueling fights down the years. Can he go through another 12 rounds in what might develop into a bruising kind of war is it still there for him still early in the fight remember Holyfield not working inside looking to try and tie the hands up of Bo you'd think really this in fighting would be in favour of Bo where he can use his uppercut and he's two stone heavier that's right the strength and the size of Bull has got to have an effect on Holyfield. I know he's in tremendous condition, but really this is not the sort of fight that he, he has to fight. Oh, 
only third has looked more impressive on the outside. He's doing very little in this run. All of a sudden he just looks a, a little jeered. He's starting to breathe heavier as well, Holyfield. Significantly. Doesn't look as sharp as he did in that first round. All these bad sides. Testing the so-called People's Heavyweight Championship. It's been recognized by New York State as being the heavyweight championship of the world. Good right to the body and left to the head for Holyfield. He started it around well and is now trying to end it well too. Welcome back to Caesars Palace. Ivan Holyfield, you just saw a little glimpse of his rally at the start of the round and then at the end. Head bow in a spot of bother early on. Yes, he started the round well and he, he finished trying to be aggressive, but in the middle of the round he did very little and looked quite jaded and quite tired. He was not looking to work inside. Round five. One thing about the old Holyfield is he could fight for three minutes of a round, maintain intense pressure. But he was starting to breathe heavily, maybe ominously for him in that last round. Again standing toe to toe and wanting to trade. A little bit of a nick underneath the right eye of Holyfield. Doesn't look anything much. Bow was on his last two fights in the sixth round. Ooh, impressive stuff from Bo. That right uppercut of his again. He has good work inside from Bo. I'm not sure why Holyfield is content to stand in close like this when he's not working. There's an impression at the moment that Bo is beginning to wear Holyfield down. Again, he, take a, he took a really deep gulp of air there, Holyfield. Almost like he was coming up for air. He looks in some trouble to me at this stage. He does. He looks unusually tired. Still very early in the fight. He's taking... Oh, big low blow from Bo. Massive right hand. Very low and one point off. And quite right too. Quite right too. Time out for Evander Holyfield to recover from that. But he looks in desperate straights to me, Holyfield, really. He's breathing so heavily. There doesn't seem to be anything there. That's right, he just didn't seem to have that spark. Very similar to how he was in the Moore fight when he couldn't lift the pace. And in his last round and a half, he's looked very similar to that. There's a troubled look on Holyfield's face, one that I've rarely seen before. A body shot seemed to hurt him as well. He skips back and he's under more pressure. Another one seemed to go low. Bo starting to tee off on him now. Oh, and that was low too from Bo. He's landed about three low blows. He's had one point in the did That looked low too. And Joe Cortez does nothing. Well, Holyfield probably deserved another respite for one of those low blows, I felt. Yes, he feels Holyfield is going to need all his courage and all his experience here because he does look in some distress. Bo seems on the verge of victory. Holyfield bravely trying to find something, maybe something from the past. Again, drops his arms and looks a weary fighter. He looks like he's running on empty, Evander Holyfield. And even this proud, proud man who's somehow managed to prevail in so many fights, surely he can't turn this around from this kind of position. Or can he? Just when you say that, you write this guy off at your peril. But he's in trouble, Holyfield. Welcome back, there is considerable concern by the look of it in the corner of Evander Holyfield. Don Turner and Tommy Brooks and the doctors are taking a look at him as well. As well they might do, he, 
there's something wrong, isn't there? There is. The referee was there throughout that round having a look what was happening in the Holyfield corner. I think there is some concern. Sixth round. Bo beat Herbie Heidi in the sixth round. He beat Jorge Gonzalez in the sixth round in his last two fights. Will he do the same to Holyfield? And look at this from Holyfield. Just when you think this man... Oh, he's got him with a left hook! That's extraordinary! Holyfield left hook and both in desperate trouble! He might not get up, he might not make it. Somehow he does, he's blinking. What a fighter this Ivan Holyfield is! Bo is all over the place. There's a long time to go in the round. The punches are ramming home. And Holyfield, from the very brink of defeat, seems now to be on the verge of victory. If only he can now drive home the punches and make it count. Bo's head is clearing. He puts out jabs. He's fighting on instinct. Somehow trying to survive the crisis. Every second is vital for him in this situation. Yes, but you still feel Bo is hurt. He can't move his legs. He's stuck in the corner. Unbelievable stuff from Evander Holyfield, who looked a completely spent force until that left hook. Well, what is it with these two? There's always something happening when Bo and Holyfield get in the ring together. And Holyfield hasn't really pursued his advantage that he had there. I would have thought he would have put more pressure on board that point. Now Bo comes back. He looks better now, Bo, and now Holyfield has to cover up. Looks punched out for the moment after the big start of the round. He just can't fight for three minutes of the round, Holyfield. Not like he used to. That's the way it looks. Yes, you feel that he's, he's biding this time. He's trying to get all the strength he can. Each big flurry of punches and put as much into it as he can. He really went for broke with that left hook. He set himself and he let it fly and it worked for him. Well, astonishing stuff here. There's a both men look very tired now before starting to get his jab working again. But it's a real twist in the plot. And maybe it's not the formality for Bo that it was beginning to look. Things have turned around a little bit. Holy Holyfield though, still looks so laboured in his movements. He looks like he's trying to move through treacle. Yes, there's no spring there at all. You just see he's really setting his legs to try and put as much into as few punches as he can. Has the knockdown taken a lot out of Bo too. Now Holyfield makes the jab work for him. It's already been another memorable battle. What about that? Well, Bo down. And Holyfield showing again his tremendous ability to rescue what seemed to be lost causes. Yes, he did remarkably well because it didn't look as if he was going to beat the count. And throughout that round, he looked desperately tired. He just got a tremendous left hook. He brought it all up right from the soles of his feet. Got so much power into that punch. You see, a wonderful shot. Perfectly timed, right on the jaw. And he went down very heavy indeed. Let it go. Holyfield was just unable to go in then and finish the job for about 20 seconds. Bo was purely on instinct, wasn't he? Yes, he was. There didn't seem to be anything there at all, but Holyfield just couldn't finish the job. He looked very tired himself. Glenn McCrory's scorecard has the fight even at the moment. I have Holyfield ahead. I must say, I gave him the first round. There was the point deduction, and the last round was a 10-8 round for Holyfield. I have him in the lead at this point. This is round seven. Glenn has it level. How are the judges scoring it? They're the only ones that count. Round seven, of course, was when the paraglider dropped in last time. You just wonder what's going to happen next with these two, don't you? They do. They both look very, very tight. Both legs look very heavy. And then they suddenly spring into action. Holyfield finds a right uppercut.
there really did seem to be no way back for Holyfield about round five remember Bo has had the point deducted for a low blow already and he's been on the floor that will affect the scoring of things still very little spark in the work of the man at the beginning of this round I think the knockdown was absolutely vital as well because it seems to have taken something out of Bo, doesn't it? That's right, it just looked as if Bo was ready to get right on top of Holyfield when the knockdown happened and that's took an awful lot out of Bo. Holyfield certainly picked it up and improved a bit from the place he was, the very, very desperate place he was about 10 minutes ago here. Starting to pick up his work right again. You see, he just goes quiet and he feels as if he's reserving his energy to put a, a good combination in. Good left hook, as they went in close from Holyfield. And there's that left hook again from Holyfield. Bo's answer is a right hand, but Holyfield may be just a busier. Again the right, and then the left hook again from Holyfield, who's starting to tee off. Yes, the picking pace up right at the end of the round. Holyfield just getting the better. I said Holyfield's petrol tank was on dry, maybe he's had a bit of a refill. But how long will it last? Not a bad seventh round this for Holyfield. As the bell goes to end the round, and I wonder back in London how Barry McGuigan is assessing this uh, extraordinary fight. Another great one boiling up here, Barry. Absolutely incredible. Incredible fight. I, I said two rounds ago to Gary and uh, Paul here that Holyfield was starting to fall apart. And then he came back with a marvellous left hook and I've been screaming the head off for him since. It's just remarkable. What a fight. I never believed that he had this left in him. But uh, you know, it's very close. In fact, I have got Bo marginally ahead at this stage. But uh, it's, in fact, I have it even, sorry. So it's, uh, it's anybody's fight going into these last quarter of the fight. And I'll tell you, it, 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 the way it is at the moment, you know, it's down to who wants it the most. Thank you very much indeed, Barry. Seven rounds gone. Remember, neither man ever stopped. Here comes the eighth round. Holyfield walks out from his corner like a man on a very slow stroll, looking very, very tired, but he's looked like that from about the third round. Good right hand for Bo. This ball really has to start picking it up now. He, he's in danger of letting this fight run away from him. He hurt him with the up left hook again there. Now Holyfield's got guard though. Holyfield was caught in the exchange by the right hand. Now he's the one who's in trouble. Can he get up from that round eight? Joe Cortez counting. He just about makes it. He got up at about 9.2. He can hardly walk. They might stop it here. Holyfield staggers into another fight. This is the end now. It must be stopped. It is stopped. Riddick Bowles is the winner in round eight. And the brave, brave Evander Holyfield. His challenge ends after another quite remarkable fight here. Holyfield absolutely out on his feet. I don't really believe that Joe Cortez should have let him continue. I really don't. He just stood there and kind of blinked at Cortez and Cortez. just took two or three more punches. That's right. Cortez asked him to walk forward and he was unable to walk forward and then he waved it on. Now they're taking a very close look at Holyfield. And really... You hope that he gets the maximum medical attention. Riddick Bow. now his first thought, being the fella he is, will be to get to Holyfield and to talk to him. 
They're great friends. And Holyfield paid the price there for mixing it with a bigger and stronger man. They were just in a, a good flurry of punches there when he walked on to that powerful punch from Bo. 58 seconds of round eight. The end of the fight. Bo is the winner. And probably next for him, Lennox Lewis of Great Britain. Bo surviving a real crisis in round six. And he was down and looked in desperate trouble. Holyfield happily seems to be okay. There's Rock Newman in there, the former DJ and fiercely independent promoter of Riddick Bow. This is where they decided to slug it out, where Holyfield walked under the right hand of Bow, and he just falls flat onto his face. He was trying to take Bow out at the time. That's right, he had some success there with a the left hook, just wobbled Bow fractionally. That spurred him on with his own punches but he walked onto the big right hand. He really staggered, though, with the left hook again, he didn't did, he? The, the same worked. interlude. That's right, and this is the finish, where really I didn't think the referee should have let it go on. His legs had gone, he couldn't walk forward when he was asked to do that, and Bo caught him with the right hand, and down he went. And so, Riddick Bo leads 2-1 in the series, having won the first fight, and now the third. But... What a crisis he had to endure. There's his wife, Judy, mother of his five children. The real family man. Here at the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace, a round of applause for two warriors in the heavyweight division. Fight number three was everything we wanted it to be. Referee Joe Cortez calls a halt to the bout. At 58 seconds in the eighth round, the winner by TKO victory, and now reigns supreme as the best heavyweight in the world, Riddick Big Daddy Bo! So Bo wins it.